I'm using organic double zero flour from Molino Casillo, Puglia's finest. Here's simply tap water, room temperature. I'm tearing the scale and weighing out 300 grams of room temperature water. Next, I'm using a micro scale to weigh out the salt. We're gonna need 14 grams for this recipe. That totals to 2.8% for the total recipe. On top of the salt and the water, I'm adding in 500 grams of the double zero flour. And mixing with a spoon. There's no need for a mixer in this recipe. There's gonna be an extensive amount of time left for the flour and the water to hydrate. This first step of the recipe is called the auto lease. You're going to leave this dough to rest for two hours at room temperature. After two hours of resting, I'm using my micro scale to weigh out 0.5 grams of dry active yeast. This very, very incremental amount of yeast will allow for a long and slow fermentation. Now that your yeast has dissolved in the water, add it on top of your dough that has been resting. You're going to simply use your hands to squeeze the water and the yeast inside of your dough. It's going to take about five minutes. The overall hydration of this dough is 64%. I find this the sweet spot with the Neapolitan style pizzas. Don't worry if your dough doesn't look as smooth as you'd hope. It's going to take a nice seven hour rest. After seven hours, you're going to grab the dough and fold it over itself on all sides. Just look at this double zero flour's extensibility. Perfect for pizza making. I gotta admit, I don't often not use a mixer, but this recipe is perfect for home bakers. You're gonna wanna now flip the dough over itself and round it out within the bowl. Look how smooth this dough is. It's now ready for another seven hour bulk fermentation. Before your final bulk fermentation, a drizzle of olive oil ensures that your dough will come out smoothly. Make sure it's coated on all sides. And here it is, your beautiful and bubbly pizza dough for La Pizza Napoletana. There's no need for a bench scraper, that olive oil did just the job. This recipe yields three perfect personal sized pizzas weighing in at 276 grams each. Here, I use plastic pine containers to ferment my dough. With a little drizzle of olive oil mixing around the sides and the top of the container, this will ensure that your dough won't stick when using before baking. Here's the pre-shape of your final pizza dough balls. I use the table to slap and fold. 
The goal here is to knock out any small air bubbles that might be trapped. After allowing 15 minutes of rest, I go back and reshape the dough balls. The surface of this dough will be super smooth. And as for the bottom part, you need to make a knot. Before adding these dough balls into the refrigerator, it is best to keep them on the counter at room temperature to ferment for one hour. One hour later, into the fridge they go for 24 to 48 hours. After 24 to 48 hours of refrigeration, take your pizza dough out of the fridge. San Marzano style tomatoes are a go-to for pizza sauce. Here I'm using the plum whole San Marzano tomatoes and I'm adding a generous pinch of salt and a nice glug of extra virgin olive oil. Today, I choose to use my hands to mix. Luckily, these San Marzano tomatoes were nice and soft, so it broke down very easily into a small, fine pulp. Our mozzarella of choice is any whole milk fresh mozzarella. Here, I cut the mozzarella into nice thick chunks to lay on top of the pizza. These tools are essential for pizza making. A wooden surface, a pizza peel, and a wire cooling rack. The first pie, I will be using my rock box by Gosney. Right now, it's preheated to about 850 degrees Fahrenheit. The dough has been warming up to room temperature about an hour after leaving the refrigerator. Here you want to generously dust your work surface and the bottom side of the pizza dough. Coat all sides of the pizza dough with flour and start from the middle with your fingers to work your way out towards the crust. Leave a nice one inch border for your Neapolitan style pizza crust. This will ensure that all air stays within the crust and is light and fluffy. Start by using a small amount of pizza sauce, or else your mozzarella and sauce will end up being soupy when the pizza is done cooking. For a classic margarita, parmigiana or pecorino cheese is optional. For this margarita, I waited for the pizza to come out of the oven before topping it with basil. This pizza is light as air. Those San Marzano tomatoes beautifully stain this pizza dough and the crust is nice and charred.
This really resembled a pizza from Naples. When using your home oven, preheat it to the highest degree. Here, my oven can go up to 525 degrees. Towards the very bottom, I leave a baking steel. And towards the top, I leave a roasting rack. The second the pizza goes in the oven, I turn it off from bake setting and put it on to broil. This will ensure that your pizza doesn't dry out and instead cooks evenly from the top to the bottom. This pizza pie here was baked with chicory green sauteed with garlic, raw chicory leaves, fig jam, mozzarella cheese, and gorgonzola dolce. This pie here reminds me of my time in Puglia, Italy, where the chicory greens were abundant and wild and the figs were falling off the tree because they were so juicy. It's a pure, delicious contrast between sweet and savory. I finish each slice off with a thin shaving of prosciutto crudo and a nice wedge of fresh black fig. And finally, a drizzle of honey. Which pizza do you prefer? The high flame Neapolitan baked pizza or the conventional home oven? Leave your comments down below and don't forget to subscribe.